is Saturday. I'm a little sleepy. I did some testing on the dyes since we have some of the students in here from the babbling brook course and I'm very excited about the results from using it on synthetics. I did some inking on different types of trims. I even did it on lace and where are the ones I dyed? Um, I think they're in the dry and getting ready to be put in the dryer because I have to do the dryer testing on it. But it really took the ink well, and so did elastic. So if you can't get elastic for a project that that you need to do, the inks will serve you very well on making the elastic fit or match the garment. And then I don't know if you're aware that we have um, the neon glow in the dark inks for um, Halloween. And I'm planning on making something and doing a video that uh, gets uploaded to uh, YouTube and also put in the classroom. And if any of you are not aware of what the classroom is, it's create.clairerowley.com, my school. I will type it in the uh, inside of the chat. So if any of you haven't joined yet. It's such small print. Hi, Jean. So Donna, Donna Brooke, are, are you, were you speaking about the classroom? Like you thought it was a classroom event today? Because you're texting in the chat. So hi, May, Ma, Mavis or Mavis. Um, darn, I got to get that. So Put a number one if it's Mavis, and I think that it, that's what it is because it doesn't feel natural to me. Hi, Brenda. So um, you made it to a live event. Mavis, I'm very excited for you. <laughs> and uh, I started a little um, early, and people who were here early were a little bored staring at the TV or the sewing machine. So I've decided that I'm going to play around with this and show you how to quilt around it. So I'm not sure what you're speaking about, Donna, because you're here. You can see me, right? See my tired face today. Okay. Okay, so it's Mavis. <laughs> we'll just talk on the phone. Okay. We, we also have glow-in-the-dark thread. So combining the glow-in-the-dark thread with the glow-in-the-dark paint, I'm actually planning on making a candy bowl, and I'll be sharing the pattern. And so you, you'll be inking and quilting and then sewing it together, and it'll glow in the dark. I think it would be great to have like a black light in your entry for the trick-or-treaters. And it's so exciting to say that I'm going to be home for Halloween now that I'm not traveling anymore. And uh, boy, I can tell you, it's 13 weeks. This is my 13th weekend home in a row, and I feel so much better. Uh, I've lost about 25 pounds um, on a eating keto, and so I'm, I'm just so grateful to be home and getting really excited about the school. So um, create with Claire Rowley. Hi, Norma. You got Steve Norman in your name. Okay. I need a backing fabric for this. And speaking of backing fabrics, when I made the first Babbling Brook, I used that because it was just handy. I grabbed it and and it definitely did not, you know, match that. So part of the Babbling Brook class, I taught you guys how to make your own binding and your own backing fabric and so I made this backing fabric for this, and this is the one that we did in the class. And look at that binding. It's so nice to have an exact match to the project that you're working on instead of 
settling for something that doesn't quite match with it. Don't you agree? If you agree, give me some hearts. And let's see here. I gotta move this and I was trying to get a little more people on here. Let's see. This was one of the things we doodled with in the Babbling Brook and I plan on making this into a little purse and teaching that in inside of the classroom. These these are will be increasing um, the number of free little small tutorials. Um, I've been busy building the school and it's taken a lot of my time, but it's it's about to uh, really start getting active in there. The Creative Feed Extensive will be opening next week, and then it'll be a, a monthly extensive class on particular parts of the Creative Feed. So we can get off the Octahoops for a little while because it seems like I've been stuck on them, I'm sure. So that's why I thought I'd play around with some of the feet today as well as do a little free motion quilting because there's a lot of people that aren't in the Babbling Brook class that want to uh, understand how to do free motion quilting using the Octi Hoops. And um, so I thought today would be a good day for that since I'm all set up for that. Let's see. I just need a backing fabric. Do you guys have any? Can I borrow some? I just want to use some that I ink myself now. I'm spoiled. Let's see. Okay. I hate having to step away on a live shoot. I'm going to flip it around because I'm going to be filming with you guys seeing exactly what I'm doing. And I got a new camera, so it's got... Oopsie. I don't have to do that. Ah, sorry. See, this camera doesn't make me spin it around. I can just switch like this. One, two, three, switch. And get the lighting good here. What's on the machine right now is the satin edge foot because the last step of uh, any quilt is the binding. And I was thinking about doing this binding on... Uh, live but it just takes a little bit too long i think and it's saturday it's a beautiful saturday here i don't how is it there for you guys you guys have storms just cut myself some backing How about I start with how to use a foot I didn't invent, the rolled hem foot. Have you guys ever struggled with this? If you've struggled with it, hit the like, thumbs up. And I'm going to educate you on this, so it's very simple. Rain. Oh, isn't it nice, though, to have fall? I'm so glad it's time for fall. Oh, the machine's not on. I didn't have the machine on. I wonder it was dark. I got to kind of tip things in a weird way so you guys can see. So I actually am going to sew through the camera, which is very trippy. Rainy, cold days are perfect for sewing. I have a wedding that I'm sewing for. I th if you follow me, you're probably aware of that. My niece. And I was going to share pictures with you um, and do it differently. But we're going to go live like we do in the school. And I'm going to do a webinar type of video coming up. And it's gonna, I'm going to cover a lot of stuff in that. It won't be live. Because live is a lot of this shoveling stuff around. Does it bug you guys when I do this? Any of you ever not do not know how to do a miter or join two fabrics together to make a longer fabric? This is how 
I like to do it. You take one fabric and lay it over the other and I use my basting glue. This is so close. Can I push this camera out? Whoa, can go closer. It's not gonna stay up there. Let me just move you. See, I don't know what I said that, Brenda, you said no to. I'll try to look here. Oh, it's hot. It's cool here. We're, we're getting cooler. I had to wear a sweatshirt to walk the dogs the other day. Speaking of, of the dogs, Tinkerbell is comfortably passed out in her little spot. So this is right sides together and I just do some dots of the basting glue. So this eliminates the need to pin it. And then slide my finger over the top of that. And some people are having trouble using this because I believe they're pushing too hard on the glue drops or maybe pushing too hard on the fabric itself after using it. But it's very, very gentle really light touch and you just slide your finger across and just kind of spread it out a little bit. And then take and place that other fabric across and you can really position it accurately if, if you have a straight cut to begin with. That's always helpful. And we're going to sew diagonally from that point to that point and a lot of times you're taught to just kind of guess or eyeball it and I'm a firm believer in not doing that because I strive for as perfect as possible. So I like to use a cutting mat and lay the binding right over like that. I also spray starch my binding. If you don't do that, know that it's awesome. It makes it much easier to handle and less likely to get puckers especially along the folds. I gotta get rid of this chair. It's really noisy. I hope you guys aren't disturbed by the sounds it makes. Okay. If you place your batting on a cutting mat like this and you take this edge here and bring it to a line and this edge to a line. So basically this corner would be a good corner. So that line there you know is the edge of this, and this line you know is the edge of that. Okay, I, all right, I'm, I didn't get enough sleep last night. It's the top one that I was right about. Yeah. I did it much better on the video that I filmed for the class, so thank goodness for that. This is what I meant to say. So there's the line. Can you guys see that? Yeah. That is where the two inter intersect. So you know that you're perfectly in line there and then you can just mark that spot with a little pen and then you have that spot there and you just take those two marks and meet them. And then we're going to sew from this end to that end, but I don't like to actually start on the end. I always start in, go back, and then come forward. And then you don't end up with it pulling in, if you've ever had that happen before. And after I do this, I'll show you how to use the rolled hemp foot and show you how to sew across where there is a join in the two fabrics. You guys are so quiet. No comments. Makes me wonder if I'm still live. <laughs> this is definitely different than going in the classroom. I miss hearing your, your guys talking to me. So let's see. Use a thread you can see well. Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> I know some people have asked me to 
to do a live like this and just kind of sew. And I'm trying it out to see how I feel about it. I'm just going to use two different colors of thread. Hi, Jean. Just watching what I'm doing. All right. Hopefully you guys have some tea or wine, depending on what time of day it is where you are. My air conditioner just kicked on, so I guess it's warmed up. Okay, so this is why I use this machine, which this is the Baby Lock Crescendo. It used to be white, and then I painted it, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm going to thread my needle, and this is why they convinced me to take one, because of that threader. Okay. So now I'm going to start, as I mentioned, a quarter inch in, and I'm using the satin edge foot rather than a standard sewing machine foot. I'm going to move the wire over and you can see the foot wobbles when it's up but when it's down it doesn't wobble so we just move it over and i'm going to bring my needle down on the line i hope you guys are enjoying the clear footage from this awesome cell phone this is the samsung 10 and i'm in love with it it's producing better footage than some of my other cameras so and the sound is awesome as well any any strip um mavis oh god i hope i'm saying that right any strip that you bring together when you when you want to make it be straight is always that same angle so no matter how big it is so you just cross the two and and go from that point to that point no matter how big it is it'll It'll work. And let's see, my hands look so dry on there, but they, they don't look that dry in my, <laughs> you know, our vanity. Okay. So needle down and then I'm going to zoom in. Got to check that out. And now you can see the little wire in there. And we want to bring the wire to the side of the sewing machine needle when the needle is down. If the needle is up, it'll deflect. So you can see how the needle's kind of moving over. We don't want that. So bring the needle down into the material just slightly. And then you turn the nut, moving it over. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this foot, this is the foot I invented for a woman who was born blind. She was taking tailoring at the Braille Institute. I feel like the stabilizing is not working. And this thing is mounted to the table, so sorry for the bouncing. And now I'm going to go instead of instead of forward, go backward. And it's very weird sewing with a through the cell phone. And then you come forward, and now you don't have to worry about the fabric getting that little snag that that can happen. I'm pulled out a little because I'm getting nauseous. It's too close. Now, normally you would be watching the needle where you're sewing, but instead we watch right here because that is where the needle is. That's how close they are together. And so it's easier to watch this, which is sitting still, rather than the needle going up and down. You just keep your focus right there and take your time. A lot of times people don't sew straight because they are in a hurry. They think everyone else is going really fast and, and we're not. And then you go back. And I would definitely go back on, on all my joins. Hi, Bob. Yes, this is the guy, Bob Riddle. You see him in the chat? He's the one that has called this the magic foot so much that I had to add it to our packaging because everyone else started thinking it was cute to call it that as well. <laughs> and... I had started getting calls for the magic foot, so thank you, Bob. It actually probably should have been called out all along. 
I like that name better. So now normal is the normal thing is to just cut that quarter inch seam allowance, but if you do, it's harder on any foot to to get over the actual seam allowance. So even though that glue, which is not really a glue, it's just water soluble stabilizer, is dry, we can just we can peel it apart. And then we're gonna spread these open. And then you have a, a, a beautiful join and I'm going to use my presser. We're gonna use a pink one, let's see here. And just so you know, these fabrics, the ends were not straight when I started because I was ill prepared. So uh, what do you mean you're watching online? Mavis. Uh, we are online right now, all of us together. Hanging out on a Saturday. Flip this over and press these as well. And you want to really, oh, that's why it wasn't sitting right. I didn't pull all the glue off. Then you just press it so it's really flat. This is much easier to do on a table, not on the top of my sewing machine. So you're learning a little binding application and now I'm going to show you how to turn, make a rolled hem. So I'm going to kind of mix it up. So not everyone's into quilting You can keep it, keep a little variety in here. Um, Yes, Nancy's notions. I mean, Nancy Zeman and I met in 1989, and uh, she ordered an insane amount of creative feet and added them to her catalog and invited me to be on her television show. She planned two episodes, and then the Foff Sewing Machine Company said that they would not sponsor her if she had creative feet on her show, so I... I never actually got to go on air with with Nancy. However, I did go to dinner at her house and uh, did some other events with her. It breaks my heart to not have her around, but about three years ago, or all of a sudden, the, the company that bought Nancy's Notions, which is Tacony Corporation, they actually dropped our feet from the catalog, and it was a shocker because we'd been in it since 1989 or 1990. So it's, uh, they actually seeked us out and came to see me in Seattle at the Sewing and Stitchery Expo and watched the demonstration and then said they wanted it back in the catalog. So, and they're moving very well. It's nice to have that, that business back. Here we go. So one of the hardest things about the rolled hem foot is just looking at it can be a little intimidating. But what are you going to get from that foot? What you're going to get is a rolled hem or a narrow hem the size of that channel. So it's going to be a very small one. So if you're rolled hem foot, and I haven't tried Brothers or Baby Locks version, I don't even know where it is. Uh, so this is actually Janome's rolled hem foot. <laughs> and so this shows you that you can use Janome feet on your brother and your baby lock machine. That's true of the Elma as well. And just snap it right on. And what we want to do is we want we want to have a lot of thread. Let's see. I used the scissors, so the bobbin thread's gone. So let's see if I can get it to come up. This is one time when you want to have some thread sticking out in about an eight inch tail. And take and place this. And one of the biggest problems with this is that you can't see through that tiny little slot. 
all of the creative feet have very large openings. It makes it a lot easier to see. So I'm always frustrated when I use a traditional sewing machine company's foot. There we go. Sorry for the bouncing that the camera's doing. I don't remember it doing that last time I used this. So now, how do you get the fabric to go into that tube? It was really interesting because my mother and I both came up with a the same idea at the same time on how to get this started. My mother was pivotal in the uh, success of our sewing machine dealership, A American Sewing Center in uh, the San Fernando Valley in California. My father and mother are the inventors of the machine use workbook. And basically, I came into the picture after they had written it and I drew illustrations. And that is how the Creative Feet Technical Guide and Workbook is designed. So this channel, we have, we have to know that our needle is going to be inside of it. And, uh, and we have to know where to bring the thread down. So based on the dimension or the width of that channel, <coughs> I'm so sorry, I was trying not to cough, is where we want to put a dot. So that channel is actually an eighth of an inch. So that's an eighth of an inch. That's an eighth of an inch. And then we go in an eighth of an inch and put a little dot. And that is where you want to put your needle. This kind of challenging to see so I usually just go you get out of there while I sew one stitch and I do so with the foot down even though it's not on and bring that bobbin thread up through that hole and it's worth it to do this little bit of work so we're bringing the bobbin thread up through it and then do one more stitch so that it locks. Now we're going to pull this out. Sorry, I can't get it far enough away. So as you pull it out, hold on to that and pull out another eight inches. What you've essentially done is created a tail. Hi Beth, welcome and thank you. I'm glad you love my feet. It always sounds kind of silly when I say that. <laughs> I love my feet as well. They're, they're a gift to me as well as to you. Here we go. So now I think you kind of get the idea of what's gonna happen here. This tail, we bring it into the tunnel and now the fabric just goes right in. And that extra tail that you have allows you to drop your foot. Voila. Now, you this finger's job is to, to take to, um, excuse, well, sorry, <laughs> live video. Now you know that happens when I film, sometimes I edit it out. So this finger, you push to the left and it reduces the amount of fabric entering the tunnel and you push it to the right and it increases it. And if you take your right hand, no matter if you're right or left handed and bring, find the center and lock your hand onto the table. Let's see if I can do this. Sorry about this. I promise one day I'll, I'll have live taken care of. I actually have to buy like a computer to handle it. So here we go. So you have to take your fingers and this hand you anchor it to the machine. So not hands in the air floating like a lot of people do. Keep their, their elbows up. We want elbows down and anchor your hand to the machine and you're just going to hold it straight up centered with the needle. This finger is the steerer. This one just keeps the fabric entering the tunnel. And I gotta center myself with a needle, make sure you are centered with your needle all the time. And I don't know yet if the needle is in the correct position. 
I will in a minute. I think it needs to move over. So I just need to move my needle over. And I'm doing this through the cell phone, so bear with me. <laughs> so you can see, very light touch, by the way, like you're barely touching. Don't pull back on the fabric or you'll get a wavy hemline. And then don't move your hand once you have it in position. And you get a perfect narrow hem. Also spray starching along the hem is, is definitely a benefit. And I'm, I'm coming up to the join. I promised I would show that. And yeah, so I already glued it. There we go. Hi, Heather from Tasmania. Oh, how cool. <laughs> the machine's bouncing more because I have the machine pushed back on the table. And so it's got a wiggle. Also slower, so it's not as bouncy. To see how easy it is, I actually designed skirts and sold them in junior high. And I did yards and yards and yards of ruffle, and I rolled him all the hems, and I sat on the coffee table. I had the machine on the coffee table, and I sat on the couch, and I sat back and watched TV while rolling hems, because once your hand is in this position, it's unless you move it, and you're only likely to move it if you lift your elbows. So if you move your hands, that's generally why it shifts on you. Now if that were a quarter inch seam, if I graded it down to a quarter inch, it would be harder for the foot to get over here. It's an easy transition this way. And that's true also of when you're doing binding and your for your quilts I don't cut it down and I'm just gonna let's see if I think it might have a little issue going through here and if it does then you increase stitch length instead of pulling the fabric from behind like you might feel inclined because we need to keep our fingers in front to keep that roll going through the tube and there you go oh you can't see it too far away. I'm sorry. Did I cheat you guys from seeing that? I hope you got to see it. Don't have time to join another one. Whoopsie. Okay. So. See how nicely that transitioned okay I'm now going to show you how you can gather this fabric up and I'm going to use the pearls and piping foot for that application I should have rolled the whole hem I'm just gonna cut it off Take that foot off, and I've been asked a lot if uh, why didn't I why didn't I have a rolled hem foot because they did a good job at making them. It's just uh, you have to learn how to do it. Now you Terry, you move the needle so that when it's on when it's in the tube, you move it over to the position that you want. So having needle positions is important. If you use a foot that didn't wasn't designed for your machine you're more likely to need to change needle position. So that was a Janome foot. I used it on the baby lock and it works, but I had to move the needle. And on the baby lock, if it was the baby lock foot, it probably was already set up for the most common needle position, which is left. Where's my pearls and piping foot? Do you guys know where it is? See. Oh my goodness, this is just so bouncy. Let 
You're welcome, Terry. Hi, Ellen from Florida. How's the weather there today? My niece lives there. She just had a baby. She just had a baby boy. Actually, she had a baby boy the day the, I think it was the day the hurricane was hitting. I can't believe I can't find a foot in my own sewing room. That's because I'm actually making... Oh, I can carry you around. We're alive. I could take you for a walk. Do I dare? I know Lynn's going, yeah, walk around. Show me your house. <laughs> I'm afraid to pull it out of this thing. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll make it a little interesting. I'll try not to move too quick. There's my sewing partner. Sound asleep. And let's see. You're going to see some chaos. This is my serger, painted of course. It's very old. It's the one of the first baby lock overlock machines. I haven't used it in so long because the satin edge foot does everything pretty much as serger does. So I have to service it before I use it. And I do plan on teaching you guys some stretch fabric in this school and create with Claire Rowley. This is a little bit of behind me. This is uh, some fringe I was thinking about putting on a dress that I'm making for myself. And the sequins and ribbon foot is on this machine. Oh, maybe there's a pearls and piping foot in there. I don't have to walk around with you. Yep, I'm the manufacturer of the creative feet and I can't find a foot. There you go. And I'm going to use this one too. How funny, huh? Okay. It's like you're the one doing it. Okay. And that was like the stuff that happens when I switch from one thing to another. It ends up in a pile. And the real mess in a live situation is there's cameras everywhere. There's cameras up on top and hitting, hiding on shelves and in drawers. And, and that's the type of footage that I do for the videos that I don't do live. There we go. Yeah, that's too much walking around with you guys, I think. I have so many tricks, Beth. Oh, yeah. It's pretty much nothing that you've ever done that I haven't figured out a, an easier way. So that's going to come out in the Creative Feed Extensive course. I'm going to be releasing all of the information that I have with regarding the creative feet in there. And then I will also be doing a, a, a section on all the other feet made by different sewing machine companies that I think are good and beneficial to you. The ruffler, for instance, most people don't know how to utilize it to its full potential. Okay, here we go. Have you ever wanted to gather some fabric and it, the pattern tells you to do two rows of stitching equally spaced apart. By the way, this is the pearls and piping foot. Not to be confused with any of the copies because all of the sewing machine companies have copied this foot, but none of them have duplicated it. In other words, they all have a looky-loo or a look-alike, uh, but they don't perform the same. They also don't have this little washer on the snap-on bar. And what that washer does is it, it doubles your sewing machine's needle position capability. So when you slide it to one side, it, it changes the location of the trim that's beneath your needle. So if you only have a left center and right needle position, you can still sew in zippers and do just about any size piping. Oh, I can't wait to show you how big you can go on the piping. Big. As big as your arm. Hi, Jean. Thank you. I'm glad you all liked that hint. And um, this is my first Saturday sew along. <laughs> I don't want to commit to every Saturday because I I'm trying to to uh, not work on Saturdays. It hasn't proven to be very reliable, but I'm trying. So put 
two different colors of thread whenever I gather I always use at least two different colors of thread if not a nylon thread in the bobbin and polyester in the top because nylon is stronger than polyester so straight stitch and in this case we're going to go center needle position and center of the foot so a few stitches forward and back And we're going to drop, I, I don't think you guys need me to show you how to put your tension to zero, right? So I'm just going to do it and you're going to hear the button. So that's me going down to zero on the thread tension. And now I'm increasing the stitch length. So my stitch length is going to be the farthest away that you can create on your machine. And mine goes to five. And use the side of the foot and just sew all the way down the length of your fabric. What's going on here? Oh, I know what I need to do. I need the washer on the other side. I tried to cheat. So tension is actually at zero. Something's wrong. It's caught and the bobbin thread's caught. Well, now you see this kind of stuff happens to me too. The bobbin was not coming off. These are um, wonderful, don't you think, Lynn? I know Lynn's got them, at least the uh, Apple Quick scissors. We have them at creativefeet.com. So if you've ever been told to sew two rows of stitches and gather them up on both sides and had your thread break you're not alone it's pretty much what happens there we go i don't know what i had done didn't i sew with it already i don't know i sometimes things are think there's little fairies inside our sewing machines that have fun messing things up for us there we go okay so so a few stitches forward and back, and then we're on the longest length and zero tension. And watching right there, not the needle. Watch the side of the foot. And just keep your hands planted on the machine, never lifting, never hovering, never elbows up. Elbows always down. This is how you sew straighter. Keep your eye focused in one spot and ignore everything else. It's also easier to sew straighter when you're not talking. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way off and don't use your scissors, I mean the button on your machine if you have a scissor button. We want to hold the, the stitch so that it doesn't pull out as we pull out a little bit of thread. You don't need a lot, just about four inches. And I have about eight methods of gathering fabric. This is just one. This is one that I created because a lady was nearly hysterical after trying to explain to me the gathering that she was being told to do and she couldn't get it to work, she kept saying, you don't understand. They tell you to sew one row and then another. And I was like, I know what you're talking about, but I don't have a technique for it. And she's like, but you don't understand. I have to do it. And it's just not working. So I went to sleep that night and I dreamt this technique. And I kind of need to get further away for you to see it. Okay, second row of stitching, tension all the way to the top. We're going to nine. I gotta plug this phone in or it's gonna go dead. At some point it'll go dead. Let me just plug it in really quick. Where's it? Oh, can't do it that way. Oops. Oh well, I'll plug it in later. Or I'll just end when it when the battery goes dead. Okay, so a few stitches forward again. And then back. 
and now you're gonna gather up that fabric and find your bobbin thread since we use two different colors of thread it's easy to know which one is your bobbin thread and you're gonna hold on to that thread and not let go and unfortunately you're not gonna be able to see it as well because it's a very long piece I should have just done a short one so I'm having tug of war with my machine and keeping my eye focused right there I'm holding the bobbin thread and the machine now uh, I may be too far away to do this see how the machine is gathering This thread's not slippery enough. This is why I like nylon. It slips better through. So we're not getting the double gather. Oh well. You're seeing the automatic gathering function of this foot where it gathers all, all the way up. So you can sew up to 360 yo-yos an hour. Toward the end here, you might be able to see this. It's possible that Oh shit, I just, this is live. I would have cut this and started over. <laughs> so we'll just do the automatic gathering technique, which does not require holding the thread. I think it's because I starched the fabric. As you can see how much that gathered. And generally the couture method is done on sheer fabrics like chenilles and stuff. Tension's on nine. So this time I'll just not show you both you just take your fabric and stick it underneath. Tension nine, length five. And this is in the book, I think, or in the Creative Feet Techniques video if you have it. So a few stitches forward, a few, few stitches back. If you don't do that, it won't work. And then you can see that it's not me gathering the fabric up. The foot does all the gathering for you. So if you got lots of ruffles to make, there's no better foot for making ruffles than the Pulsing Piping Foot. It has to do with the unique shape of the tunnel that it creates that incredible ability. Isn't that neat? So I had a lady come up to me at a show and she's like, she was almost, she was very animated. And she, she was about 20 yards from my table out and there was a bunch of people around me because that's what happens at shows and and she uh, she goes like this and then starts walking over to me like that oh I had no idea what uh, she was gonna do and there was uh, a little separation in the corner of my machine so she she comes up and she slams her hands on the machine really hard and goes do you know how many yo-yos your pearls and piping foot can sew in an hour and I was like no <laughs> and she says 360 and you need to tell everybody about it so i'm telling you if you have to sew some yo-yos this is the the fastest way you cut it you cut your fabric in a circle before you ever so you don't have to use those little you know formers and cut and hand sew through holes and all that yeah, this just gives you that automatic gather so is there anything else that you guys like really want to see on sewing Maybe I'll show you a little sequins and ribbon because I did satin edge. Okay, so I'll show you a little sequins and ribbon. And this is trending. A lot of people are buying it right now. I, somebody must be teaching something really cool with it. Our feet are used by most of the top educators. And even if they don't tell you because they're, they're sponsored by sewing machine companies that tell them they can't talk about my products. So... These are the three guide options for the sequins and ribbon foot. And even though sewing machine companies have kind of copied this foot design, they, they only have just one size guide and it's usually rather large and it's straight. So when the needle goes down into the fabric and as it exits, the ribbon lifts up, forcing you to hold on to the ribbon and then you make the fabric gather. So what do you want me to do? Ribbon? Somebody say something ribbon sequins or yarn because yarn is you know couching they're all couching by the way and i have all of it at my ready so nobody's typing 
You're acting like it's Saturday and you don't have to do anything. All right, I'm going to get some yarn. I'm going to show you something fun. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera. Are you guys still having fun or did I put you to sleep? After this, I'm going to show a little free motion quilting. Oh, Brenda, um, I have toyed with the idea of carrying sequins, and we were we were really going to add them. Thing is, is you guys don't want to buy gigantic quantities, and the price or the, the amount of time it takes to wind like 10 yards of sequins. Let's just say uh, you don't want to pay the price of the sequins for us to wind them in the current way that we have to wind them, but that doesn't mean I've given up because we have winding machines. So it's just figuring out how to wind something so little and get it on a something else so that it's not tangled and the sequins don't get ruined. So know that uh, um, probably we'll sell them, but I do have a lot. If you are needing something, please, you know, don't hesitate to ask. I actually am friends with the inventor of the machine that created sequins on a string. We met um, early in our careers. She She's the owner of Meadowbrook Inventions and, and the creator of that Angeline hair that Carol Reinhardt likes. And she sent me a whole bunch of that and she goes, I want to see what you do with it. So know that I plan on playing around with that at some point. Now that I'm home, I can do these things. It's 8.45. You're in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, I'm so glad you love my feet, Heather. It does bring me a lot of joy to know that that they're that you guys are using them. Some people are too afraid to put them on the machine and it just breaks my heart. I have this. I bought this at a show. I spent a lot of money on this. A whole box of different yarns that go together. But look at how neat it is. I mean, even just one one little roll is actually four different yarns. So this is another company that's taking yarns and winding them on smaller put-ups and you have to pay more for the labor to do that for you and uh so let's see i don't know i think i want something more maybe this one i know if my friend terry's on she'd be going do the purple if you ever find a yarn that is really really knobby and gigantic and just like really thick and you can't really bend it the pearls and piping foot is used but for all other yarns we're going to use the sequins and ribbon foot i'm going to switch and show you how to do it okay the sequin and ribbon foot comes when you buy it with a quarter inch guide on it. And then these are two optional guides. If you buy our specials, which you'll find in the Creative Feet specials area, then uh, you have them. Even if you've never used them, you may not know they're there if you haven't had cause to use them. Even though there's only those openings, you can do every size of elastic with this foot also. It's the best foot for elastic in the world. Nothing, nothing is better. And it has a, a secret to why that is so. So no one's copied it. <laughs> so this foot right here, this guide is too big for this thin yarn. And I'm going to switch it. And how you do that is just turn the nut until it falls off. And because I'm a sewing machine mechanic, and I, if you didn't know that about me, I am a what's called a master mechanic on sewing machines. I can service industrial and domestic machines. And I don't do it anymore. 
but if I have to, I could. <laughs> so taking that off, and why I mentioned that is I would take a screw out of a machine and something would go flying and roll around on the floor and I couldn't find it. So this guide is designed for the nut to stay inside so you can't lose it. So you might think it's you need another nut, but you just pull that right out and drop it into the next one. And the only thing that you have to pay attention to is that little post there. And you just put it right on. Those of you who end up in the Creative Feed Extensive, this is the type of you know footage you'll be getting on each foot. You'll learn all of the design features of it and go back to it at any time. It will be categorized so that, kind of like the Creative Feed Technical Guide and book, Workbook in our video that we already had, except for much more extensive. So I'm tempted to just put the foot on, but if the foot is on, it's kind of hard to put the yarn through. So it is best to take the foot off when putting trims through. And I'm still trying to decide which yarns to use. Oh, there's this really neat stuff. Here we have it. Anytime I show some really neat stuff that I don't carry yet, I'm like, oh, but I got to get it in stock. I'm going to show it to you anyway. Everybody still awake? I've put people to sleep many times. This is really neat and I can get it. So it's just a matter of getting it in stock. And so I'm going to show you this and then I'll add something else to it after. Because sequin and ribbon doesn't get enough attention. I don't use it enough on videos. You're welcome, Karen, and you know, you're not the only one. If you guys join create.clairerowley.com, it's a free school. There are some things you have to pay for in there, or I'll go broke. Um, but the uh, the membership includes, you know, access to me pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it feels like. <laughs> as, you, as it grows larger than it already is, um, it, it'll probably take me a little longer to respond to you guys' questions, but I do my best to... Uh, be a support to you and other members are helping each other. It's really nice to see the community growing closer to each other. Now that went through, but if it didn't, you just take a piece of thread. Why is this cutter not working? And you just lay the yarn over a piece of thread. In this case, it's ribbon. So if you ever bought a couching foot and it only couches yarn, this couches anything. And we are going to add these to the site soon. The ginger nips. I love these because you can wear them as a necklace. And they're really sharp at the tip. It seems like you wouldn't need so many pairs of scissors, but I use all of mine. Let's do it. Let's do a poll. How many, how many scissors do you own? I dare you to list the number in the chat. So now you see how I have that yarn just laying right over the thread and you just pull it and it takes it right through. And now unlike any other foot, this foot totally surrounds the trim. So it cannot escape the foot. And sorry for the bumping of the camera. <laughs> it's not my worst live, that's for sure. Something to sew on. Yeah, sew on a little quilted fabric. More than you want to count. Come on, this is about... I bet I have more than you. Well... I would count all our inventory too. So is it just scissors or does that include little nips, Debbie? So 
So this is a little quilt square that I did for another live feed that I did. And a nice thing about the sequins and ribbon foot is you can use a straight stitch. So on the back side of your quilt, if you were to quilt anything like this, on the back side it will look just like the any other stitch that you quilt. We're starting to get this weird look. There we go. Is that better? Noisy chair. That's not too bad. Eight. That's not bad. So what you're not able to see is that I am not going to touch this as I sew. I'm actually holding the fabric up. And that's what I teach all the time. I don't teach you to put your hands down because what you're doing is the feed dogs are pulling the fabric through and you're pulling back and or down and applying pressure from above. Got to take my tension away from or back up back down because it was at 9 for gathering. That looks good. Okay. So if you had a pattern drawn on the fabric, and I'll just show you how you can follow that too. You can actually write out a poem in your own handwriting and then write over the handwriting with yarn. So if you want to do something. Oops. The pin hit the machine. 12. Did you go and count? I want to know. Did you guys get up and go and count? Are you guys that obedient? So this is a straight stitch right through a yarn that is engineered to spread apart and become bigger than it is. And if your needle isn't centered, you just move the nut and it moves the ribbon over so you don't have to turn. That's not what I meant to say. Oh, this is live. I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> so, oh, so you don't have to move your needle position. That's what I meant to say. So my eye is focused here. Just keep that slot right above the line and you're able to follow around. And it seems like there's uh, feed, like the feed dogs are lowered when you use this foot because it just allows you to spin and there are people that are using this with the octi hoops and quilting with yarn with the octi hoops. So, and I I can't do this through the through the phone as well as I would if the phone were in my. <laughs> I'm feeling a little drunk from it, so a little nauseous actually. So I'm not gonna stop trying to look through there. Show you how you can really go fast and. If you want, you can also use a zigzag stitch, a decorative stitch. You can, so that's kind of off centered. So now if I can center it better. Okay, so there we go. And it got a little wider. They have some that flares out more than that. But you can see how nicely it works. Thank you, Sue. I'm so glad that you're using them. It makes me so happy because a lot of people have them sitting on their shelf and talking. they talk to them every day going, you really need to use these feet. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in there and I'm going to add another yarn because that's one of the fun things you can do with this. And as depicted in Nancy's catalog... Nancy's notions for anyone who doesn't know what I'm referring to. Uh, they, they have two trims through there all the time, but you can use just one at a time. You can use that one for just single yarns. You can also use round elastic and do, uh, what's it called? It's a gathering technique with elastic kind of shearing. Nope. Smocking. And that is one of the techniques in the creative feet technical guide and workbook. If you don't have the book, and I would say even even if you take the extensive course, you're still going to benefit from having the book and the video because it's quick access. I should say that's like the, the fast track to using the feet. Feel free to leave testimonials at creativefeet.com if you guys want to share your feelings in a 
you know, so that people who are checking it out can know that we're just not saying they're good. <laughs> of course, we do already have a lot of testimonials on there. So this is another yarn, and I think that complements it. So if I can get the end of it, this ball got unwound. Okay. Oh, every time I sew for you guys, my sewing room gets so dirty. <laughs> Thank you for recommending them, Sue. I really appreciate that. So, do you guys remember how to get the yarn in the hole? If you say it out loud, you'll remember when you go to do it. Talking to yourself out loud is a very important part of remembering anything in life. Kind of give yourself instructions. So you can say, oh, I hope I don't get a headache today and get one. Or you can say, I want, I'm going to feel, I feel so good today. I'm going to feel even better later. I really should get a new piece of thread. There we go. And then you pull that thread through. And the yarn goes right through. And then be careful not to pull it out as you pull it back because I, I like to not waste any if I can help it. This is when it's fun to play with decorative stitches on your machine. And this machine actually has one that I'm going to show you. So I apologize for having to move you. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Now I got to find it. That's not it. That's a neat one too, but that's not it. So I don't think so. I got to calibrate my screen. If that happens to any of you, if there's a calibration video on YouTube and you use this, the pen that comes with it. And this machine traveled a lot, so. Sorry about that. It's in the screen. There it is. So what's its name? You tap on it, and it's the couching stitch. How convenient. So what's nice about that stitch, and you can rewind this, and you'll be able to watch this again later. It's getting, we're getting a little bit long here. I don't know how long we've been on. It's been a while. Okay, I'm going to quilt back up. Hope I'm not talking too softly or too loud. I have the mic really close to my mouth. Give me a thumbs up if, if the sound has been okay this time. I guess it has because no one's complained. <laughs> I promised a little free motion I haven't forgotten and I will be doing that in after these messages, no. <laughs> okay, I have that decorative stitch on now, and before you begin really working on your project, you would check to make sure that it lines up. If not, then you just turn the nut, moving it over. And you, oops, sorry. And you can also go wider on the stitch to make it easier to catch it. Okay, I'm sewing through the camera again. Oh, it really does make me nauseous. This is why I don't do well on um, those movies where you wear the glasses, I get nauseous from those. And it's just so cool how you can go in any direction you want. And you can use this to applique as well. Oh, I can, I can show you it. Let me get the project so you can see. Show 
Okay, well, it's good to know that I haven't hurt anyone's ears or made you strain. <laughs> okay. Hold on to your horses. Here we go. My sister Kat made this. She's now a karaoke DJ. She used to do shows for me all the time. She was also on the Home Shopping Network as well when uh, when we were on there. So this is a little project that she made. I believe it was one of those panels that you buy. And she, instead of using a satin stitch, did yarn all around them. Those of you who have seen me at shows before have probably seen this. The only places she did a satin stitch was silver and green. So the rest of this is all yarn. And I like how the elephant's ears are three-dimensional. I don't know if this is still available anywhere. Isn't that cute? And if you're not familiar with Carol Ann Waugh, she's actually joined Create with Claire Rowley School. And we met uh, several years back after she published her book, Stupendous Stitching, which you can find at creativefeet.com. She's also a craft seed teacher. I guess that's now called Blue Point or Blueprint. <laughs> Blue Point. Blue Point oysters are very good. This is what happens when no one's talking back to me. I can just go on and on. She did a class called Stupenda Stitching in, oh, bye, Karen, it's okay. I don't expect you to stay all night. Thanks for joining us. This is kind of a play on it. This is just some batik fabric that I that I got, and I, I doubled it up using some batting. And it's a wonderful way of playing with the sequin and ribbon foot and your decorative stitches. And then it's a really, I think it's a pretty wall hanging, but you can get a lot more out of learning Carol's stupendous stitching class. All right. I think it's time. It's time. Time for a free motion and then dinner. So here we go. Do any of you have any questions? This is, I'm going to just kind of quickly see if I've missed any of your comments. Nope. I think we're good. You can stare at Toucan Sam for a minute. While I get this off. I'm about to do a tutorial as well. It'll be a different kind of video similar to what I do in the classroom where I'm not in my sewing room. I'm at my desk and I have the power of my big computer to keep up with the speed of the camera and streaming. And I'm going to teach you all how to go in to join the classroom. I'm going to teach you guys how to optimize your computers for YouTube and Facebook. And because when in our first course, some people were having trouble with their computers. We learned a lot, let's just say. And so that will be coming soon. And these two dresses that I'm making this week, one for my friend Terry, who's paralyzed on one side. So it's gonna have some unique features to it because she can't zip a zipper up or button a button. So I'm making her dress in a way that she can put it on easily. And I will share the picture in my Facebook, in the create, in the, oh, I have too many different sites. I already shared the dress in the classroom or in the school, create with Claire Rowley. And then in my Facebook group, I will, I will post those pictures after I'm done with this long live feed. You guys are barely doing any thumbs up or anything somebody's crying oh I did did I make somebody upset I should have told you guys the truth about the sewing machine companies okay
I just want to know when when did we become a society that thinks that cheating is okay or stealing or copying is okay? In school, you're taught not to copy, right? And then the first thing that happens when you start a business is people start trying to figure out how to copy you. And some people accept it and think you should, you know, just, you know, don't be a baby. And so what? You got copied. <laughs> so this is um, not something I normally talk about. I feel like I'm alone right now and I'm not. So let me move this. I'm trying to clear my table. I'll let you look. See the mess that I generated and help doing this? This is a really cool ruler. We're going to add them to my site, and they're the rolling rulers. You can find them on Amazon easily. I might provide you a link. Know that whenever I provide a link, if you do click on the link, you are supporting the education that I'm providing you. Because the links that I put on my YouTube channel are links or affiliate links, so I get a little tiny bit of money back if you buy something from clicking on one of those links. If you don't opt to buy it directly from me and you go to Amazon. Okay, we're using no foot because we're on the octi hoops. You can use a foot if you like and if you ink fabric, like if I quilt this, and how would you quilt this? Because this is small. It'd be really small and challenging. To quilt something smaller than the octi hoops are in diameter. I really wanted to quilt this. This would be. Except for I want to make it, I want to do a good job. <laughs> I could use our practice as the backing. That would be an interesting backing. See, this is this is what I should quilt on because that doesn't matter. But it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind, right, you guys? I'm just going to use this, and we will do more videos. Live ones tend to get too long-winded anyway. I'm going to change to a pink thread so that you can really see it. Because the last time I filmed quilting, people couldn't really see the thread. Am I making you dizzy? Just close your eyes for a second, everybody. <laughs> there we go. Okay, safe to look. So I'm going to remove the presser foot. And the screw that holds it on. And, and I can't do so with my fingers only because I do what you should be doing which is tightening your screw with a screwdriver. Especially when using the satin edge foot because it has a wire that you can hit your needle with. You wanna make sure that that doesn't get loose and start wobbling while you're sewing. The needles I prefer to use are the super universal needles. It's a relatively new needle and it has a special coating on it. It also has a flatter back end. So the back side of the needle doesn't bounce off or the fabric doesn't bounce off the back of the needle as much as it would with any other needle, including the needles that they sell for quilting. So from, in my opinion, this is the best needle for quilting and for um, any woven fabric. It's just absolutely phenomenal. You'll find those at creativefeet.com as well. And when you pull up the universal needles, you pull all the you look all the way down the list. So you'll click universal needle and all the way down at the bottom you'll find the super universal. And a 8012 needle would be good for what I'm doing. And I don't remember what's in it. In essence, to save time, I'm just gonna do it. Oh, you know, I want to do. Instead, I'm going to use the glow-in-the-dark thread, this one here, and I can't wait to play with this stuff. So it's a 40-weight polyester. 
that glows in the dark if you expose it to light. So if you were going to sew with it before you go outside, you'd want to expose it to some sunlight. There's not very many of you. I don't think Saturday's a good day to go live. Or it really has been the quietest week I've ever seen on Facebook. Is it the politics or summer ending? I don't know. Here we go. There's two hoops that we use at a time when doing free motion quilting. And the one that goes on top is the one that is the closest to your hand in size. So if you put your hand inside of it and it fits within that prim the, the diameter, then that's the best one to put on top. You do get three octa hoops in a kit. Oh, and by the way, we have a 15% coupon going right now. It's a secret coupon for just people on in my social media. I'll type it in the chat right now in case you guys don't know about it. Okay, so if you enter that into the coupon box, you'll get 15% off your entire order. So there's three hoops since they, they each drop down in size about that much. And that allows the quilt to lay between the two hoops without stretching it out of shape. And your, your job is to bring the corner together with your non-dominant hand and just keep them together. They're also designed with a, out of a secret material. It does not scratch your sewing machine, so it, you can't hurt your machine by using them. And it eliminates you from having to push down while doing free motion, which is immediately I start feeling pain across the top of this hand if I push down. So it's probably some past injury that makes it hurt so bad right away. But if you were to quilt like this for a long period of time, you would hurt and just don't want to do that. Okay. I suggest that you, you carry these around with you, walk around the house, make them familiar. <clears throat> we do not like things that are not familiar to us. If a stranger comes, we got stranger danger. It's an instinct in your, uh, your biome, your gene genome or whatever they call it. So if you keep them with you and just kind of, you know, hang out with them for a little while, carry them around and just keep doing this, bring a corner together and move it around and do it only with your non-dominant hand. Do not use your dominant hand for that because you're trying to train the non-dominant hand to hold those two together. And then when you really feel that you're, you've got it, then you can take and place one frame beneath and the other frame drops in. Diam inside of the the one below, below it. <laughs> I'm starting to stutter. And then and then there's a handle that you can integrate before you start using the octa hoops. And those of you in the create in the babbling brook course, this is all in the video, the final video. So as you you can draw. Any, any design that you want. So if you can draw a feather, you can quilt a feather. But before you start actually doing it, it's good to bring your needle down really low so it's close to the fabric. And your dominant hand, so if you're left-handed, you would just switch. And if you're left-handed, you probably will want a table over here because you need to put your hand down while you're writing. And it's healthier for you to do so. <clears throat> I'm, I am right-handed, firmly grounded and right-handed, so I can't even show you how to do it left-handed with the handle. However, whoa, sorry, you guys. I can't quilt one-handed as long as I don't touch the handle and I put my head on my hand. So I sit like this with my head on my hand when I quilt one-handed. It's very relaxing.
And you should uh, practice going around the shape. Elbow or your hand is supposed to be on the machine, not on the quilt. So on the machine or your arm, and then your hand comes up and actually rests on the, on the frame beneath it. So everything is connected, but nothing is connected at all. And the beauty of this is the, it's the mathematics of an octagon that makes this possible. So by bringing one corner to the corner of the other, we're able to move the quilt in all directions and it doesn't slip. It also is a very light, very easy to move your quilt around. So you don't have to worry about the backside getting pinched. I feel like the lighting got really weird in here. I don't know if you guys are seeing waves across the screen or not. I can't figure out where to put my arm. <laughs> One sec. No, I'm not going to be able to do that. Close your eyes. I'm moving the camera. There we go. A little more. Okay, I'm still very uncomfortable. We'll see <coughs> how I do. Excuse me. So we go around. <clears throat> and you're just practicing the movement before you actually run the machine. And just keep practicing that movement. And you shouldn't feel a jerking. If you feel a jerking, that means you're pushing down. And it'll be an instinct for you to push down in the beginning. I gotta take a sip of water. Hold on. You should have a mute button so you can cough. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm lowering the foot despite there not being one. And we're going to go ahead and bring the bobbin thread up. And normally you would match your needle and bobbin thread to one another. Straight stitch, center needle position. I don't change the tension unless I find I need to. <clears throat> it's almost always the needle thread that needs to be reduced. And I'm so close to the microphone right now. Once you get the hang of this, it is super addictive. I can't put my arm like that. I think I'm making it vibrate more. <clears throat> Any design, yay, that you can doodle on a piece of fabric or on a piece of paper, you can doodle on your quilt because you're writing with your fingers, not with your arm. So my hand is planted, as always, elbows are planted on the table and my hand is resting on the hoop beneath it. The stitch length does not exist. This is true free motion. I'm gonna lower my feed dogs and that's partly why you saw it bouncing. But you could see that I was able to quilt even though the feed dogs were up. On one layer of fabric, uh, Nancy, I was not, I was gonna show that today, but I thought I'd skip it. Um, you wanna do embroidery or quilting? You wanna quilt with a single layer of fabric? So quilting is more like tracing. If you had a, a fabric and you wanted to, oh, I have a perfect example of it. Hold on. What am I looking for? Oh yeah. The problem is, is if I go too long, this video is so long, <laughs> but 
like if a fabric has a pattern like that and you want to just enhance it with a straight stitch it's quilting but you're not actually going through batting and that can be done with this however we do use a stabilizer and there's a trick to it so that you're not actually going to see any stabilizer on the back when you're finished I think it should be another video because I'm getting tired what time is it oh I've only been going an hour and a half okay After a while, you'll just start having fun. It's a good idea to just not have a plan at all. Get a piece of fabric and just start doodling. And, and don't put a lot of weight. Don't give this a lot of value. This is just a piece of fabric that I'm going to use to put my dog's dog, this dog treats in when we go for walks. I made a mistake there, but nobody really knows that it's a mistake unless you tell them later. Because you can just make another design. Our feet attach to every sewing machine ever made with a zigzag stitch. So when you speak of five, seven, and nine millimeter machines, a lot of this has to do with the uh, walking foot mechanism being built into the Janome sewing machine when they came out with the Horizon. And they started calling it the nine millimeter and it's caused a lot of confusion. So what they're referring to when they say nine millimeter is, well, that's, this is, this is the one that got driven over. So, um, someone said, I was on a television show and I said, we give you a lifetime exchange warranty, even if your dog chews up the foot and spits it out. Um, I didn't mention that even if you drive over it with your car, because we did have two students that drove over their feet in the driveway. And this is one of them. And you can see it is still a fully uh, assembled foot, but it's been disturbed. And I was like, thank you for sending it back because I really wanted to get a good look at it. So we gave her a new foot. We were happy to do so. So let me grab one that's not destroyed. So you see this little bar? That's a seven millimeter space. It has nothing to do with the zigzag width. So five millimeters shouldn't even be brought into the mix, into the discussion, Sally. So the five millimeter machines, that's just they just have five millimeters zigzag swing. Um, this will work for all of the machines, including the nine millimeter, because... Because we give you adapters and when Janome came out with the horizon they asked at a show they they had me come over to their booth and use the creative feet on the machine and the reason they were so concerned about it is because there were time you know I could have up upwards to 150 people around me at a time at a show and I would be asked the question do our feet fit all machines and I would have to say Every single one except for that. So they didn't want me to ever say that at a show. So on the Horizon machine, you'll use the B adapter. Do not worry about the name of the adapter. Just know that you should get the one that's closest to your machine's foot in height. And I'll show you what I mean. So you take your ankle off. <laughs> oh, slippery fingers. So you can see how that lines up. So this is the correct one also for the baby lock and the brother machines. If this doesn't snap right on, and since this model is a seven millimeter wide snap on bar, it snaps right on. So on the only time you need the adapter is if your machine's snap on bar is not the same size as ours. Does that make sense? So erase the five millimeter from your mind. It, it only applies to seven and nine millimeters. It has nothing to do with, uh, it, there's no, no worries on our products. That's why we guarantee they'll fit all machines or your money back. And we always have. 
And we've even had sewing machine companies send us machines just to make sure that they didn't go too far in their modification. Even though they're all copying me, they all still respect me. The people that copied me, many of them have passed away because my company is 31 years old. So let's see. Would you like me to do a little more free motion or um, do or quilting or do a little embroidery really quick? Yeah, our feet fit every sewing machine, including all of the Janome sewing machines. Well, I, I can recommend that you guys don't ever get a sewing machine to try to mimic an industrial machine. So there's sewing machine companies are selling these fast quilting machines, but they don't have zigzag stitches. And you really don't need even a zigzag. You don't even need a round, a straight stitch plate as you're seeing me quilt right in front of you with no with no foot and this hoop works on all sewing machines because it doesn't attach to the sewing machine so um, if you were to get one of those single needle machines you can do this but you're now not going to be able to do the quarter inch seam allowance with the satin edge foot and when you see how fast you can sew a quarter inch with with this, with the satin edge foot, which is the one I showed you that had been driven over. Here's one not driven over. This one. That guide, that wire, this is the only foot in the world engineered this way. And it adjusts so that you can achieve uh, a variety of different seam allowances and, and sew at full speed. When I invented my feet, I was a Janome dealer. And as a sewing machine mechanic of Janome machines, um, I come from a different place. I'm I'm not just somebody selling a product. I'm the inventor of it. So, and I face you guys. So, if I were lying, I would be in trouble. <laughs> you can find all of our products at creativefeet.com. I don't know what I'm doodling, so I'm making something ugly. So let's see. This is the glow in the dark thread, though. I can't wait to see it glow in the dark. I unfortunately can't show you that. <laughs> because it's not dark. So see how simple that is? Oh, and you can also write your name with it. Can you imagine a quilt and, and you quilt the whole thing with the glow-in-the-dark thread for a kid and they go to bed and their bed glows? Give me a heart if you like that idea. You guys are quiet. So what's I going to do? I don't remember. No one's talking. So, uh... When we have a classroom setting, I actually have you guys, you're able to talk to me verbally, speak with your mouth, and I'm, I'm missing that in this live chat experience instead of going, instead of hearing you guys talk, so, and I'm getting sleepy, so I'm starting to ramble. It seems like it's late. I feel like I'm on East Coast time zone. <laughs> Let's see. I don't want to leave anything out so that you have a full understanding of why these are so great. So they don't attach to the machine. They work. You can use one, two, or three at a time. And there's techniques for using one, two, and three. You can sew on wedding veils. Uh, embroider right on a wedding veil with no stabilizer behind it. And... Do the free motion quilting. You can use a foot or not use a foot. You can also quilt king size quilts with it. There's people in my group that have shared their pictures of their king size quilts. This is me just going around in a circle, which would normally be challenging, especially, oh, the pebbles. And what is a pebble? It's a circle, right? Have you guys drawn a circle before? So it should be really easy for you to draw circles, even little ones, but it's not with any other hoop system because you have to go like that with your whole body and move it around and it makes you fatigued. So the size of the, the, the circle, you know, varying the sizes makes them appear as pebbles.
try to keep them round. I didn't go round. Don't sit in one spot too long and or you'll cut your thread. That's what happened to me just now. Okay. So do any of you want to see free motion embroidery really quick before I end? Give me hearts if you do. Otherwise, I'm going to probably end the video with uh, no hearts. Y'all tired? Yes, you're tired, Beth. Or, oh, okay, fine. Be that way. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I got to get my stuff. I wasn't prepared for this. Ooh, I could embroider over that. That would be fun. Okay, changing my thread. If any of you are not familiar with who I am, my name's Claire Rowley. I'm the inventor of the Creative Feet, and I've been a teacher for 37 years. Oh my gosh, I actually did the math the other day. And 37 years of teaching sewing machine use, and so more um, getting your sewing machine to do whatever you want it to do than teaching garments. But in my classroom, I will be teaching you everything from draping to um, quilt upholstery and wedding wedding veils and gowns, and you know it'll evolve over time, and eventually I'll retire, and you'll have everything. I know in a classroom that will not expire. So I have to think for a minute. Oh yeah. Okay. One of the products that we use for embroidery is our stick and tear. And this is actually my dad's invention. And it attaches to the back side of the hoop. Uh, a live session, Karen. Uh, trying to do it more. I want to get my cameras to function better. So I plan to, at some point in time, be a weekly live. So I know that's the plan, but... Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. You'll find the links to that inside of the Creative Feet fan site. And there's also a Claire Rally Creative Feet um, Facebook group where you can interact with me more in, in addition to my new school, um, Create with Claire Rally at create.clairally.com. And I'm being redundant right now because I just don't want to dirty another. I don't want to. I'm just tired. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we were using these hoops for quilting. Now we're going to use it for embroidery. It was really too simple. I was looking for a hoop and it was sitting right there. I'm a little embarrassed. What you want to do is you want to choose the hoop that's closest to the size of your embroidery, but if you want to do embroidery the size of this entire table, you could because uh, you'll just reattach the fabric. Just pull the fabric up, move it over, and, and reapply. So this hoop is a good fit as long as I don't stitch out here and go ahead and do the flower part. I also feel like I already have an open stabilizer. So this is the original stick and tear stabilizer, also known as Stick It All, also known as S is in Sam, I A is an Apple, S I A for Stick It All. And uh, my dad invented this and the Hoop It All line of embroidery hoops, which are no longer sold because sewing machine companies made their machines bigger to compete with him. And making his product not needed, still desired, but not needed. And so if you own a hoop at all, creativefeet.com is, we are the makers of the, of the stabilizer. So you're not 
You don't have to worry about ever not having it. And if you've ever used a sticky back tear away stabilizer before and your needle got all sticky and gooey, it was not our brand. It was one of the companies copying. Because they love to copy us. So here we go. I'm going to draw a line around. You could use your rotary cutter as well and just cut around. However, um, whenever you would come to here, you would have a slit and a slit and it kind of wastes some of it. Every piece is a patch you can use to patch it because this is the only one that is patchable as well. You can patch it up to 20 times before you need to replace the entire sheet. So if you have an embroidery machine, this is awesome for your embroidery machines as well. And I will be showing, as I do have the Destiny, I will be doing a whole series on machine embroidery. But first we are taking care of the creative feet. And I know that's coming. Everything. As long as I am stay healthy and stay home and have time to make all these classes for you. Sorry about that noisy chair. I keep dropping things. Okay. Where'd it go? Oh. You should use your junky scissors. That's what I'm trying to find now. It's You are cutting through a paper, but the state was it's okay. I can sharpen scissors. Just don't do what I'm doing. I also have a professional scissor sharpening machine. This is about a 38 year old pair of ganger scissors. We don't carry the ganger scissors at Creative Feet. Um, I'm going to be carrying another brand, the Kai Scissors. There's a couple of theirs that I really like. I don't like them all, but I can show you what the ones I love look like, and these are them. And they're the regular shear. So it's number N5210, and they are amazing and really hard to get dull. I have put them through a lot. So the stabilizer is cut to size. And people have called this sticky paper, and that's because companies actually, when they copied my father, thought that he made a paper. That he just put some sticky adhesive on paper. I just dropped that. Okay. To get the paper to come off of the actual stabilizer, which is really polyester fabric, so it doesn't dull your needle. Paper is bad for your scissors. It's also bad for your sewing machine needle, so you shouldn't be using stabilizers that are made out of paper. So now that I've peeled that off, just kind of fold down the paper, and this is freezer paper. It's a really high quality freezer paper that you can use for other crafting. I'm just taking lay that down and now it's on and we will stretch and reapply because it's a repositionable sticker it does not get any adhesive on you because it's not like that it's more like a post-it note you can put post-it notes down hi Connie Fuller welcome Nice to, nice to see your name. <laughs> Is it interesting seeing me on the camera behind? This is what we have to go through to film for you guys. You have to see what we're doing. See what you're seeing and, and then pay attention to what we're doing. And then when, when you have it taut, you want to look all the way around the perimeter and make sure there's no wrinkles. And then should sound like a drum and now if you wanted to I know one of you I can't remember which one of you said that you wanted to embroider on one layer of fabric or you were asking about just stitching on one layer of fabric you can actually cut a window now out of this and just cut 
a square and lay fabric over it and sew in the hole. You would draw a line on top of your fabric using like the friction pin that erases away from the iron. And so you don't stitch across that perimeter and then you would have no no fabric beneath it at all, which I do on wedding veils. But if we're gonna do an embroidery, and I'm gonna, it's fun to embroider on fabrics you ink. This is one of the inking things you'll learn inside of the Babbling Brook class inside of my online school, which we do have the fall session is about to close registration. So if you're interested in learning how to make that and so Beth, you're a lucky one that has a hoop at all. If you want to learn how to make this, Put the binding on, ink your own backing, and ink your own binding. So that's why the, the binding goes so nicely with this project, because I actually made the fabric by inking it. It's really cool. One of my favorite things right now. Okay. So Beth, do you have one of the giant hoop it alls? I'm going to switch now. There we go. The difference between embroidering with a round hoop versus our octagon shape hoop is a round hoop can can become oval when you're pushing against it. If I knew I was filming this, I would have a, a traditional old style which they're round and you have to stretch the fabric in between two rings and stretching your fabric in between two rings is is a problem even on embroidery machines so you would hoop our stabilizer with the paper release liner on it if you have an embroidery machine and then score around the inside perimeter of your frame peel off the paper that and then that exposes this and you can see how sticky that is and even though it's that sticky I'm clean there's no no adhesive transfers onto you. This is a very expensive process, and we are the only ones that have this trade secret material um, of stabilizer. I know that kind of sounds funny, but it's like a patent, but better. I gotta grab some colors of thread. Let's see. Okay. I might really enjoy this. This is what gets me into trouble. You guys ask and I just like, I enjoy it. So you'd think after 37 years of teaching sewing, I, I would be tired of it, but I pick some colors. Ooh, fun stuff. We are about to launch an entire line of embroidery thread. It took me a while to pick one that I liked and we have chosen it. So the thread is already in stock. We're going to offer in the special offers area the entire color line and have different groups of colors for you to choose from. In addition to having them also individually just trying to decide what color to do first. Don't you hate it when you can't find the end? Give me the like button if you get frustrated not being able to find the end. Or a thumbs up. No crybabies because then people think something bad happened. Let's see. All right, I'm just not going to do that color first. That's all there is to it. So have any of you got the Octi Hoops and have done embroidery with it yet? Give me a heart if you have. Nobody? 
a good time to buy them or a coupon. And if you didn't know there's a coupon, it is listed in the chat. So just look for my Creative Feet logo in the chat so you can scroll through fast to find the coupon. But it's CF. I shouldn't say it because it's going to expire and this is a live, this video will be recorded. So it's in the chat. People get frustrated when they can't use a coupon that expired. So you can bring your bobbin thread up or um, if it's, if it's short, you can leave it underneath. So you can see my hand positioning. I'm actually drawing with it and the other hand rests just like you would put your hand on a piece of paper and write and my I can't get my arm anywhere let's see there we go you should be centered with your needle I'm not and you just start to color if we're gonna get a little teachy here and not just demonstrate when you embroider like this you you want to keep coming back to the center and as you go out you don't then change direction and go that way this is where people end up not liking their work so you keep your direction go back over the row of stitching that you already did and we don't want to cover up all the ink because that's part of the beauty of this project. And you can hop over and just start sewing over there and cut that thread later. On embroidery machines, they call that a carryover stitch. So Connie, you've done some embroidery with your hoop. Yay. Anybody else? So you used it a lot for the baseball caps? Oh, your hoop it all or our octa hoops? Because you can do a baseball cap with the octa hoops too. You can get really going fast here. I don't know if the camera's getting a little shaky from me going too fast. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, known as thread painting. And that happened when embroidery machines came out. We had to kind of quantify it and give it a different name. But this was always first. And I taught machine embroidery before. I invented the octaves. I had all I could show you my old stuff. I know where it is. Then I could keep you on your... And see how I'm not doing good? That's because I don't sew as well that direction. So spin the hoop around and take the handle out and bring it over here. Elbows are down, by the way. Shoulders relaxed. I can see a little bit of the bobbin thread popping up. So I'm going to reduce my needle tension just a little bit half half of one number so was four now it's three and a half another good thing to do is just match your bobbin thread to your needle thread if you're going to do a lot of different pinks have one one pink bobbin thread I'm going even lower yes free motion embroidery is the original name and I learned from Lou Ray, who I believe she, she's probably deceased at this point. I was 16 when I took her class. That's 50 years ago, and I think she was in her 50s when I met her. She was awesome. I've had the privilege of knowing quite a few of the most amazing teachers and inventors of products and a lot of them are gone now we did just lose 
Lynn Graves, the inventor of Littlefoot, Bigfoot, and the Purple Fang, and she was a friend of mine. We both released our feet around the same time, so we've known, we knew each other for over 30 years. And then in July, we lost Kay Wood. And then, of course, you're probably all familiar with Nancy Zeman passing. I don't know. i got to undepress this conversation. They were just amazing, wonderful inspirations. And it has made me think about that I will not be here forever. And that is partly why I opened the school. So that I can give you everything that I know before I don't sew anymore at some point. That's a nice way to put it. You guys, ask me a question that gets me off that topic. <laughs> Hi, Connie. Connie is, uh, Connie, I don't, I don't want to say your last name. I'm probably not going to say it right. Connie is in the chat and she teaches with these hoops and the creative feet in Seattle, Washington. Well, not Seattle. Put your store name in the, ch in the chat, Connie. And phone number, address, or e website, or whatever you want to do. So that if anyone in here is in Seattle or sees this, because this will be forever on our YouTube or our Facebook page. And she teaches uh, some doll clothes. And you know, Connie, you kept you said you would want to teach in this in my school on the doll clothes. And there's people in there that would like that. The sewingproject.net. Okay. I just say Connie's school. <laughs> okay, so I've laid down a little pink and it's kind of time to switch colors. You can get carried away and do too much. Sorry for bumping the camera. I was really bad on this on this one, so I'm gonna do a little more to soften up those edges. You see how my fingers drifted to here? And that's simply because I'm sitting six inches to the left of my needle so that you guys can see. And it's starting to hurt my back. So it's important for you to center your body with the needle and like get your, you know, get your face right here. And you can actually like push your machine back and I'll just show you. I'll try anyway. We'll see how well this goes. Switch the camera and flip it around. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay. I am literally like laying down. That's how I embroider. And my arms and every part of my body is resting. So that is what you want to do. None of this elbows up that you've been taught. Yep, Connie lays down too. <laughs> I want to lay down and embroider. <laughs> and uh, so if your arms are long, you might have to push your machine farther away from you in order to do it. So whenever you see me teaching with the octubes, I always have the machine up. I don't have it drop down inside of the cabinet because it's healthier for you to not. Okay, I'm flipping you around again. Sorry, I moved that awfully fast. Did you ever see the waterfall in there? There we go. Connie Fuller, don't you know Connie Thack? Is it Thack? That's probably not. The two Connies, you know each other. If you don't, you should. You both live in the same area. We are doing a little embroidery. I'm having fun now. And I'll tell you what, if I'm stressed out, this is the best thing that you can do for, for stress is super relaxing. And if you are thinking, no way, it's not, um, you just haven't done it enough or done it with the Octi Hoops. Because the, there are some not so good methods out there that hurt to do them. Okay, I think 
I'm just going to have to find another purple that's already open because I probably have way too much thread. Anybody else have too much thread? Imagine this all glow in the dark and it's a pumpkin. So the glow in the dark thread is fun. Should I bring in that color? You guys can't talk. I can't hear you. Through this whole process, I am also using my thread dispenser. You can find it at creativefeet.com. The thread dispenser is your is a thread delivery system. It is not for storing thread, it's for feeding it to the machine. And so that's why you won't see me have a lot of trouble with my tension and with breaking thread. So this color is significantly different than this color. And this is when I wish I knew where all my bobbins were. A good thread for putting in the bobbin, by the way, is the Invisifil thread. Oh, this is the new polyester that we're carrying. I love it. So we'll have the, we're starting out with half the line of their 40 weight, and then we'll bring in the other half after it takes a while to add. A whole new product line to our website. Don't have one full bobbin. It would so be nice. Didn't I see a full bobbin? Is this your conversation? You guys do you have that? Oh, I wish I had a bobbin full already. It's only a difficult thing because I have all this equipment around me. So Connie, are you ready to start filming your classes? You can just talk to me in the school. Won't put you on the spot. This is an awfully light color green. And so it's basically up to me what I do. No one will know if I do it wrong because there's no such thing as wrong in art. I almost did it where you couldn't see it and you guys couldn't yell at me to tell me. Well, people were asking me to do these things, these sew alongs, so I'm doing it. You can see how that's going to, if I go all the way to the end of that leaf, I will strike the hoop, so we don't want to do that. I should have used the next hoop up. But I can take it off afterward and reapply it. So this behavior right here, I put my finger down, and as I curve, it acts as a pivot point. But I am not pushing down. Remember, my elbows are bumping the camera. Oops. And there I made a mistake, but oh, where's that mistake? Prove it. It's gone now. You can't see it because I covered it up. I just did something weird. Starting to get fatigued because I'm not sitting in a healthy position. Let's see if I can't make it better. Oh, I wish I could film this. You guys would laugh if you saw me. <laughs> no, Barbara. This is a regular sewing machine and I'm steering it. So if all you have is a an old featherweight, you can do this. In fact, I was going to do some videos with the featherweight using this. So if you've been wanting an embroidery machine and you can't afford one, this is something you can immediately start doing. This is uh, my Octi Hoops. And we did free motion quilting with them. You can watch the video back afterward. It will be on our website, on our Creative Feet site. Maybe I should do a little show and tell. A little show and tell instead of continuing this because I'm getting tired. And I can show you some of the embroideries that I've done with this. But you get the idea. This is, although we're starting to get more people on so you can do little circles 
because I'm moving my fingers in a little circular motion. I didn't really want to do it with green, but just kind of showing you. So since I did do it with green, I'm going to do more. It's just kind of like writing the, a zero over and over again. This is the same as doing the pebbles on a quilt. So if you've ever wanted to be able to do pebbles on a quilt and, and had difficulty doing it, it's because of the hoop. This is actually an entire set, Barbara. It's it's a hoop that is designed with the holes. It's an octagon shape, and it's engineered for this stabilizer to adhere to it without getting you sticky or the hoop. So after I'm done embroidering, I can just peel the paper off and do it again. And this is my Octa Hoops. I'm the inventor of this product. So... You actually get three, three different ones, different sizes. And we, I will be teaching how to use all three at the same time, by the way, for those of you who already have it, for a three-dimensional embroidery project where you, you can actually look in and around your embroidery. Lots coming in the Create with Claire Rowley School. So this is... Uh, Saturday sew along and I will be doing them periodically maybe not on Saturday or do you guys feel like it would have been better earlier in the day what time do you want to watch videos on Saturday if you could tell me in the comments that will help me to know you know the best time because when you're live it's more fun when there's more people watching So I am just, I'm just doing this movement, just going around in circles with my fingers. Does it look like anything you've ever done with your fingers before? This is exactly the same muscle memory thing you do when you draw. So these are the only hoops in, in the world that give you the option of true muscle memory practice. So you practice on a piece of paper and you're using the exact same posture, hand down, so your hand is down and you move just your fingers. Creativefeet.com So the word creative and then feet like your feet because I'm the inventor of the creative feet. You'll probably uh, find those equally exciting and they are also in this video. I, I This is a long... I've been on for been on for over an hour. I know that because it was an over. Oh, oh yeah, I started at three. So I've been on for two hours. So there's two hours of video and I kind of went all, I, I showed a variety of different sewing techniques and they went to quilting and now I'm in embroidery. So if your intent is for embroidery, you came in at the right spot. But if you're interested in any of the other items or projects or techniques, then you should consider watching back this and you can see how that's looking. Do you guys like that? Or should I not have used green? I don't know. This will end up being a little purse I'm going to make, a cell phone purse out of this. So lots more coming. I'm going to go ahead and change to another color thread now. This machine is the baby lock and it has a scissor button. So when I push that, in case you never knew, if you don't know what those do, is it actually cuts the top thread and the bobbin thread. So it saves you bobbin thread waste. But you don't have to have a fancy sewing machine. I've been doing this for 30, oh, I don't even know how many years. Oh, 50, oh no, 40 years. <laughs> how old am I? Because I started doing free motion embroidery when I was 16, and I'm now 56. Let's see. So what your struggle is when doing free motion embroidery with any other hoop system is that your hands are usually pushing down and then moving, and it causes the fabric to stick like that. And when the fabric sticks, it gets really short. See the foot, Barbara? Isn't it amazing? It's like the most invisible foot ever actually not a foot 
I'm just teasing. What does the foot do for you on a sewing machine? Since I'm the inventor of feet. Well, I know, Karen. You know, I, I'm tempted to go. I really am, but um, I gotta... Don't do that to me. I will miss you as well. Needle down, needle comes up, and that's what happens if you don't use a foot. It grabs hold, the fabric grabs hold the needle. With the Octi hoops, that does not happen. Needle goes down, needle exits. So you don't need a foot. Thank you, Connie. I'm feeling younger every day now that I'm staying home. And and just because I'm not doing shows right now doesn't mean I'll never, I'll just never will do them the same way. I just had a bob and run away. That's not fair. There it is. So there's people that teach to use white bobbin all the time, and I don't agree. I think you should have like six different colors if you're that are that fall within different shades. So you got a, a strong pink and then you have a light pink, and you can use them for all the varieties of pinks. But why why take a chance? Because sewing machines misbehave, things go wrong, spools of threads don't feed off properly. It's not your fault when these things happen. I'm going to take the thread off this bobbin. Somebody was so excited to see how I did this at a show, so I may as well show you. I also plan to do events, by the way, so I'm going to pick my cities. We're going to do four a year, one every season, a live event where you guys come with your sewing machines, and I teach you. I'm discussing doing this with some other educators as well that use my products and have their own. So that's coming or in the works. Which color should I use? Come on, tell me. This one spoke to me. The more hearts and shares and comments you make during a live video, the higher it ranks in Facebook. And so feel free to, I mean, if you do that, that does help support us. And there we go. You like the color of my machine. So Barbara, are you new to me? You've never seen me before. So yeah, I paint my machine. So there's animals and stuff all over this one. There, there are videos where I show the whole machine and give you a little tour of the surface area of it. Oh, I was winding a bobbin. I gotta unthread it. No big deal. I got an automatic needle threader. I'm watching football with one eye and watching me with the other. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to have the energy to finish this, but I'm enjoying it. And so the, this video is a long video. So it'll probably take a couple hours before you can watch it back, Karen, but, um, There's, we, we have a school, if, if you guys don't know about that, an online school. So you have access to me like you've never had access to me before. And in the school, we actually go on live camera together and stuff. Well, I'm the one that started all the painted sewing machine hoo-ha. I, I painted my sewing machine back in 1989 and... Um, whoopsie, wrong button. So my bobbin is winding and it's going to scare me when it stops because no matter how many times it happens, I get scared when it stops. So I'm probably going to stop it before it stops so you don't hear that loud noise it makes. 
I'll stop it now. You're sewing with me. It's kind of fun. So if you're going to use a dark color thread, use a dark bobbin. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you. I had one video go viral for a while on Facebook, and it was, it was so fun to watch it go every day for, like, it was constantly going, so... And it was like this. It was a long one where I did all these other tech, all these different techniques. And what I'm showing you here, I mean, you can do because of the equipment that I made, the Octi Hoops. I started my company be, because I was made afoot for a woman who was blind and deaf. And that's my dedication for my entire career now is to make products that not only are fun but are healthy so you can't hurt yourself when doing this and I don't know if you know about this but you all have some deformities from unless you don't write very much but if you write with a pen and you do it long enough your finger becomes bent so if you all look at your writing finger you can take a break from tapping the hearts and stuff but there, if you look at your writing finger and it's bent and then you have a bump on your neighboring finger it's from holding the pen and so if you sit in an uncomfortable position or you push down for a long time and you hurt when you do it your bones start to fuse together uh, your body's trying to relieve the the tendons and muscles from the hard work that you're doing so everything that i designed is to make you sit in a healthy position so the creative feet when you use my feet you don't look at the needle and when you Embroider with the octa hoops, your elbows are down instead of up. There's no real pressure being applied here. And as I was saying before, it's like, I usually am not so close to the needle, but I am sitting six inches to the side of the machine right now. And I'm not sitting in a healthy ergonomic position. You will be, because you won't have a camera right in front of you. You can go relatively quick when you get the hang of this and, and as soon as you realize your needle is not vulnerable to breaking and the only way you're going to sew through your finger is if you look at your finger while you're sewing so have any of you ever sewed through your finger go ahead and do a thumbs up if you have i have once a little bit from a customer freaking out because she thought I was going to sew through my fingers. So she, she gasped and it scared me. So then I did, <laughs> but that was in the old hoops. We used to have to hold our fingers so close to keep the fabric from bouncing and the fabric from stretching and, and shrinking in. So this fabric will have absolutely no puckers when, when we're finished and I'm covering too much of the ink. I think I got to slow down the stitching. So this inking that you see on the fabric is part of the Babbling Brook class that's offered in my school. My online school is a free school. There are some classes that cost money. And the Babbling Brook is many, many hours. And on just inking and quilting your fabrics. And then you learn how to bind as well with my binding technique. My dog is barking. I don't know if you can hear him or not. I'm thinking this might be cool to do like teeny weeny little circles inside of here. With this one. This would be nearly impossible to do without our octi hoops because you, you would have to be going like this and moving just a teeny tiny bit with your fingers. If you're at home right now, just take your fingers and put push down on something and try to move it in a tiny little circle. And you'll immediately start to feel how your hands don't like that at all. I'm not really liking what I'm doing, so I'm just going to... I think it's too much of a contrast. But I'm going to go all the way around to keep the continuity. And these little details is what makes people think that you used an embroidery machine. 
and how you can win blue ribbons at, at shows by adding elements that they know is physically daunting. A lot of my students have won blue ribbons using the octahoops for their free motion quilting. I had a lady sit in my lap at one at uh, Road to California, and she started banging her body against me, going, "I won fifty-seven hundred dollars! I won fifty-seven hundred dollars!" Everyone was looking at her like, "This lady is crazy." <laughs> and uh, she said, "Those octahoops didn't cost me a dime." So, and I, I think she did her grandson's face. Not remember, not sure what ribbon she won, but that was a good prize. And she embroidered the, the child's face and then quilted out from there. This is actually inks that we offer. They come in bottles like this. And I have an inking class on my YouTube channel that you can watch for free. It's a really powerful product. I made the binding and the backing fabric with the ink so that it could match. <laughs> this is upside down. So I so I could make it match this. And this is this is also that those inks and then that's the inks as well. So this is this is a class that's starting very soon in in the Create with Claire Rowley school. And I will put the link after this video ends. Or you can just, I'll just do it right now. But the chat, I believe the chat goes away. Maybe it doesn't. I don't think it does. I've written it a couple times in here already today, though. That's the school, and that's where you'll find that class. And my YouTube channel is this. Inside of my YouTube channel, I, I think it was my last video, so it, it should be... If you just search for videos and whenever you subscribe, by the way, if you guys subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit the little bell so that you get notified when, and you can choose what type of notifications you get, by the way. And the same thing happens inside of Facebook. So if you're not getting my notifications in Facebook, go inside of the group and there's a button that you can push up there that that says notifications and if you just click that that's just not enough you have to click and then say what kind of notifications you want how much notifications do you want <clears throat> and then if you turn off your notifications on your cell phone because you're tired of your phone making noise know that you no longer get the notifications from anywhere so this is one of the videos I'll be teaching you guys I'm going to I'm going to be doing a, a tutorial showing you how to optimize your computer so that you don't miss out on the things you want by getting annoyed by your phone. And uh, I'm about to change color again here, but so I'm just I'm just coloring. I'm actually enjoying this, so you got me until I'm too tired. My dogs might make me quit. So if you can see, this is what I'm steering with. And this hand just stabilizes the hoop. It's the same posture you'd be in if you were writing on a piece of paper. See how exact it is? It is exactly the same. And so your brain, in the, in the beginning, your brain has to forget to push down because you're always having to push down on everything when you were taught. So it's very light and slips and slides on the, on the bed of the machine. It's hard to convey it, but it's just, it's a very light touch. If you have arthritis and you can't grab that and hold, if you can't hold a pen either, uh, know that you can hold this any way that feels natural to you. If you've adapted to another way of holding a pen. 
If you're left-handed, you just swing it around and use your left hand. I'm not left-handed, so I'm not good at it if I do that. Thank you for joining me, Karen. I wore out your computer. I'm glad you're enjoying this, Nancy. I think you're in the, in the fall session of the Babbling Brook, aren't you? Yeah, my dogs eventually, my little Tinkerbell, <laughs> she uh, she comes up to me and she'll go, err, err. <laughs> it's the only time she ever makes that noise. She's like, all right, you, you, it's time to pay attention to me. So, I did show her on the video earlier. Um, I don't like moving you guys, moving the camera around too much, get y'all nauseous. So the ink part is fun and we don't want to cover it all up because that's part of the beauty of it. And if you stitch it all, it will be gone and it'll just be embroidery. And let's see. So, and, and Nancy, this is, this was done in the babbling brook class, the flower. So you'll end up with one of these too. So now you can watch this video to after your class is over to finish this up. <clears throat> Let's see. I think I'm going to go really off the rails here and do black. And so I stop. I don't get too carried away and cover the whole thing. However, I'm going to show you something. If I, if I can, if I can see it in a few seconds, I'm going to show you something that you can do really fun. Oh, oh, you don't want to be on camera. This is Tink. I hear Chase. Does Chase want to say hi? Chase wants to say hi too. Come on. Come on up. This is Chase boy. Oh, he's a clumsy boy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Let's see if I can find that. All right. You're welcome, Norma. Have a good night. I'm, I'm probably not going to do much more of this. I'm, I'm getting tired. No, oh, you're, you think I'm done. I'm not done yet, Chase. Nope, I guess it's not meant to be found right now. Found something else though. All right, move. Pardon me, puppies. Okay. Okay, a little show and tell. This is something I taught. And this, we used to not be able to embroider directly on clothing. So we would embroider on organza, then cut it out, and then applique free motion the uh, item onto canvas, and then put it on these boards. And so this is what we used to. And that was 1983. See, long time. There's another one. And another 1983. Then this was my own design. I designed this, and this class was constantly full. I can do much better now with our stick and rinse, but that was fun. But see how all of the stitching was done on another piece of fabric, and the fabric was destroyed by the time you were done doing all of that work. So you would take it out wash and dry it and shrink the thread because it was cotton because polyester was really bad back then 
from cotton shrinks. So you gotta think about that whenever you embroider cotton with cotton thread. And this was fun. I really enjoyed doing that one. So once again, 1983, I don't know, I guess I don't have any from any other year, but that was another one of my designs. So, oh, you switched to your cell phone. <laughs> Are you hooked on this not class? Okay. So what I was trying to find was this fabric. I found the fabric, I think. But I can't find the hoop. Yep. I should just give up. It's hard to give up. I might want to show something. I just saw it the other day. Chase, do you know where I put it? We are live here in Prescott Valley, Arizona. Pronounced Prescott Valley. This is another one. And I was going to quilt the rest of this tonight, but I couldn't find my backing fabric. I, I want to really do a nice backing fabric. I want to ink it so it matches. You can buy panels like this and embroider or quilt right over them with this but but you can embroider as well if you have liked Lorelai's designs she's a friend of mine and she has fabric so a lot of people love her embroidery but don't have an embroidery machine or can't afford that software you can get her fabric and color over her fabric and cover it all up and you end up like having her embroidered designs. And so I'm, I was trying to find one where I covered up an entire piece of fabric, but I have no idea where it is right now. Sorry about that. Okay. A little bit, need a bit more sewing. It's almost six. That's almost three hours. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> I love you guys too much. Can't put black on. Ooh, I have a black bobbin. Cool. So remember the Invisifil 100 weight polyester thread for the bobbin, and you won't have to change bobbins very often. Looks like my internet connection's not as good right now. Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Are any of you in your pajamas? See, you used to just have to come to a show and sit around my table, and I could only really get to get through about 300 of you a day. And you were mostly bobbing around and hopping and looking around other people trying to find out what I was saying. It was exciting to do shows and see you all there. But I was just not reaching enough of you, and too many of you were not using the products that you bought. So I am, I know that I need to take you past just giving you products and give you classes that you can do in your leisure. Oh, by the way, yeah, the Babbling Brook will be also available in a couple days in video only, so you don't have to follow a schedule. So if it's too difficult for you to actually be on schedule, then you might want to take the video version, which is pretty much not having me live at all. So here we go. I have thousands of things to teach you yet. You are just beginning to see. For those of you who don't have a machine that cuts your bobbin thread, you bring your bobbin thread up before you begin. That's okay, enjoy your dinner, Karen. I will be doing the same thing very soon. So we don't want to cover all of it, but covering some of the black. We want to keep it messy. A lot of times people try to make their embroidery look too neat 
And that is what sets free motion apart from embroidery machines. It's always much richer to have a free motion. There's nothing wrong with the thread on top. Why are you yelling at me? My machine stopped. You thought there was no thread? That's funny. I forgot what I was saying because that happened. So. Rethread the upper thread? I don't know. Okay. I believe you. So you know what I probably have? I have a bird's nest underneath. I do, a little bit. So I didn't thread the machine right. I threaded it almost right. So it allowed me to sew. But you see those loops? If you have loops on the bottom, it is always the top tension, okay? Never the bobbin. So don't mess with your bobbin tension. Leave that alone. Sorry, my face is so big on this. So I should clean that up. And I'm also going to just double check. Yeah, bobbin's good. So huh. it's because I have all this stuff in my way to thread the machine. Try it again. Did I do it again? I think I did it again. It's funny how when you're not sitting in the same position... The things you do automatically become harder. You could take that whole nut completely off when doing the free motion. If you're inclined to lose things that you put in a safe place, you don't want to leave it on the machine. Well, yeah, I, and, and no matter how much I teach that to Connie, people forget. Uh, or they, they think, it, since it looks bad on the bobbin it, bottom, it must be the bobbin. And it's the opposite of logic. And there's a lot of causes for looping, and that wasn't really that bad. Um, it can be much worse. This will be lined, and no one will see, so... You also want to make sure you always have your presser foot up when re-threading your machine. That's actually probably what I did. I had the uh, thread for the foot. Because the foot is not there, it's easy to forget to raise it because it's not in your way or you're not seeing it. So if you thread the machine with the foot lowered, the tension discs are closed and the thread lays like on the outside and doesn't get in between them. I don't know if you can see that. If that made sense to you. Have fun, Connie, and thank you. You're so sweet and congratulations on your health and I've lost 25 pounds since you saw me and I'm not walking on with crutches anymore. So for those of you who don't know, I hurt myself two years ago, broke my shoulder and injured my knee. So I'm deliberately making, just doing three stitches and I, I'm tempted to cover all the black, but I, I want to have that loose feeling that I was I created with the ink to maintain by the way there's a sale going on at creativefeet.com if I didn't say it to any of you that were interested in getting things the coupon is listed in the comments or in the chat oops I looked away never look away Never look away from what you're sewing when you're doing free motion. And when you do look away when you're sewing free motion, you can send me a text or an email or whatever and say, hey, I did it, even though you said not to. 
Because when you start using the octahoops, it gets really easy and your brain doesn't want to wait for the needle to stop moving. You lost 90 pounds, Connie. Oh my God, that's so awesome. I'm not sure what those are. So maybe I should make them look like a bud. I don't know. It's loose art. We're not supposed to worry. So basically, oh man, this is the problem with me. I don't like leaving things undone. You get uncomfortable, you just switch to the other hole. These hoops can be used to mend as well. Anything you've ever not been able to put under a presser foot, you can use with the octa hoops and sew it. You can also do anything they do in the hoop for embroidery machines with the octahoops. So you can do applique and build little Barbie dresses that are too small to sew inside of the hoop. This is one of the most versatile products that is out there. And fun. It's very addicting, which is why I'm still sewing for you guys three hours later. Oh my god. I think this is the all-time longest video I've done. I suggest you drop your speed to about 70% of full speed. It makes it easier for your brain. Because then you can put your foot all the way down and you know it's not going to accelerate and get too fast. <clears throat> so this is free motion for any of you that have joined us later and don't know. That's why you see my hand here holding onto this thing that looks like a crayon, but it's actually a steering device that drops into holes that are on all eight sides <clears throat> of this octagon shape. And the octagon shape, <clears throat> excuse me, is this is a really strong shape, so the fabric can never pucker. It will never, never pucker. I love saying that. Nothing like hearing someone talk in absolutes. Oh, I should show you something different. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. I'm like, I know I have something. I'm so, I'm so tired. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. Okay. How can I integrate that in there? So you can move the hoop in a zigzag pattern without using a zigzag stitch for, tape, for tapering. So you can taper around any shape that you want. Notice I dropped the speed on the machine considerably while doing this. And if you were watching me right now, you would see me rocking or swaying with the machine with that movement. <clears throat> and it lifts up now. It has more dimension. Let's see if I can't let you see closer. <clears throat> And it will be up to you as to which direction is most is easiest for you to move the hoop in a zigzag motion. You might feel better moving side to side. Oh, the camera's in the way. I can't bring the hoop over there. <clears throat> so you might feel more comfortable moving side to side when doing a wide stitch like that. And if you go at an angle, you can actually create like a calligraphy. So this is not what I intended because remember I wanted to do this really good. So I'm going to make it look like it was supposed to be like that. It's all just a doodle. 
We're just doodling. It's good to have music. Sing along while you do it. It's very relaxing. Another thing people tend to do, like I just did, was not stop and readjust your hand. So then you, I got this sloppy stitch. Oh, you can't see it. I got this little sloppy stitch because I didn't stop to readjust my hand when I was uncomfortable. Now I'm getting carried away with the black. I want to look sloppy out there. Okay. Well, I feel like I've had a date with you guys today. I am the Energizer Bunny. People always called me that. Yeah, that's my number one uh, tease from people at the shows. She's the ever, ever Energizer Bunny. She never stops. It is kind of like being at a show because I used to sew for seven hours straight and talk for seven hours straight. You guys usually say something, so I just have nothing to talk to about myself. Is there any more black? No. And with that, I think I should stop. All right, you guys. I've had the best time. I really have. But, um... The doggies are, they've reached that point of pouting and we have a, a little window of opportunity to take a walk before it gets dark. And so I have a complete mess now as well. Don't forget to check out the inks. We have them, we have new colors if you're, you already were in the Babbling Brook class. Hearts to you too. I love you guys. So, but I can tell you 13 weeks being home has been very good for my health. And uh, it took me until probably last week to not sit there and feel anxiety that I was supposed to leave and go somewhere. So it really was starting to take its toll on me, on my soul. So I, I can't do, I couldn't do it anymore. And it, and it was a shock to a lot of people. And I got some shows that are not very happy with me right now, but I said, you know, I may do a show or come in as a teacher instead, <clears throat> instead of a booth is, is my plan. So I have to form a class, but first I'm forming my school. So priorities first. And, and then, and then there's always the live events. The first live event will be in Prescott in my hometown and it will fill up fast. I'll be letting everyone know that it's going to be um, available to buy tickets for and say what day and time so you guys can be on and try to get tickets for that and and that's how we'll handle each of the events that I'll be doing which will be in places I want to go like Hawaii I want to go there and maybe do one there and I would like to do one in Southern California in the northern part of the state as well there's just too many people that to not do that. So I shouldn't be talking anymore. Do any of you have any questions before I go?